Hi folks, so it's been a while since I posted anything related to microcontrollers and sensors, so here's an update. I was recently invited to assist with monitoring of a, quote, Gardens of Tomorrow experiment at Mission Gardens here in Tucson, Arizona, requiring environmental data logging of a covered and exposed garden for comparison. The first phase of the project is deployed, so this is the first chapter of a new playlist to document its development and performance. Today, I'll summarize building and testing a homebrew radiation shield for temperature and humidity monitoring and conclude with preliminary details of a deployment at Mission Gardens. In future chapters, I'll dive deeper into the development of the homebrew data logger, which not only is customizable, but can save thousands over commercial alternatives. Since time and materials in support of the project are being donated, I needed to find an alternative to a commercial sensor radiation shield, which is critical for accurate temperature readings, but outside of my budget. There are low-cost alternatives on Amazon, but given how much sun we get in Arizona, I'm not sure this narrow design will prevent bias from the housing heating up so close to the sensor. Out of necessity, I did a little online searching and came across an instructable for building this low-cost homebrew alternative. This design provides a little more airflow and space for the sensor to operate relative to cheap alternatives on Amazon. So it's a good preliminary step for designing a more weather-resistant model for 3D printing in ABS. More details on that in a future video. So this is a screenshot of the parts recommended by the designer for the build, which includes a DS18B20 temperature sensor. I'll include a link in the description of this video, but today I'll share a few highlights from my own build, reflecting changes to address my own sensor selection and mounting hardware. For parts, I started with the recommended 8-inch plastic plant saucers purchased from a local big box retailer for between $10 to $12. I also purchased a six-pack of threaded rods and some locking nuts from an online retailer for a total of about $15 shipped. And for spacers between the plates, I used some 1 8 inch diameter poly purchased from my local hardware store cut to 1 inch lengths. The remaining parts for the shield itself are made up of fasteners and washers, most of which I managed to scrounge from my surplus drawers. And unlike the design on the Instructable, which calls for a DS18B20 temperature sensor, my own build will house an HDC302 temperature and humidity sensor for added capability, precision, and accuracy. That sensor will be mounted on an Adafruit quarter-size protoboard, which will also host an Ethernet jack to make things a little bit more modular. I use this formula to determine equal placement of the three holes that will house the threaded rods to tie everything together, and then I measured and drilled out the holes in the stacked plates. All the plates were given a good coat of white spray paint to help the plastic hold up to the elements for testing. And this photo shows the suite of plates side by side. I removed plastic from two of the plates to help with seating of the protoboard with the sensor and also to give the sensor a little more space to breathe to offset convective heating from the adjacent plastic. And here's the protoboard with the sensor mounted on one of those modified plates. The temperature humidity sensor is being isolated with a small scrap of packing styrofoam saved from some packing material. As you can see here, I added some space around the mounted sensor on the next stack plate to avoid bias in my readings. In retrospect, I could have probably modified a few additional plates to further minimize bias, which is something I'll keep in mind for a model I'm putting together for an independent study project in SOLIDWORKS. And here are all the plates stacked and spaced neatly via the threaded rods, and some hardware from my spare parts bin to tie everything together nicely. And here's the completed radiation shield coming in at about $30, not including the protoboard sensor and Ethernet cable, all of which I had in my surplus bins. The radiation shield and sensor will be one of many attachments for this new data logger, which I'll summarize in a future video. All right, folks, so I've got the HDC302 that's mounted in this little makeshift radiation shield. I've got it hooked up via an Ethernet cable, and uh, I'm running the HDC302 uh, basic temp humidity sketch that comes with the library for the sensor, and you can see that it's working okay. 
So now what I need to do is come back to the sketch that I put together for Mission Gardens. Uh, and I just have it talking to this right now. Um, just the one of the two HDC 302 sensors I have planned uh, for the installation. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let that run in my backyard next to a second HDC 302 temperature sensor that's in this formal radiation shield. Get these off of that. And uh, see how the two compare. Uh, this is a Davis radiation shield that came with a weather station that was given to me by my brother-in-law. I've been collecting data for this little mulch experiment. So let's see how the two compare. Okay, so the uh, revised or edited sketch um, has been compiled and it's uploaded. So it should be writing data to a data logger right now, um, to a little SD card, I should say, uh, using the data logger. And uh, that'll give me a means to compare both the formal installation to this little makeshift installation. Okay, so I'm uploading the edit. See the light is flashing right there. Looks like it was uh, done successfully, so I should be able to set this up now in the backyard next to the other uh, radiation shield and see how the two uh, compare. So what I've done is I've hung the uh, little makeshift uh, radiation shield um, behind the other one, and uh, they're both at about the same elevation. Certainly not a permanent installation, but should work okay. I do have this resting on a little angle iron. You can see I've got it isolated uh, with styrofoam and foam down there. And let's see if we can see, I don't know if you can see the little temperature sensor in there. If I can zoom in, there it is. So you can see it's totally isolated from any plastic, plenty of air around it. So that's what I wanna see. Okay, as far as the box is concerned, you can see here I have a solar panel. It's kind of in the shade, doesn't matter. This thing in Arizona, because we have so much light out here, even in the shade, uh, this thing will start, still be uh, keeping that battery topped off. So let's first look at the data that was recorded by the HDC 3022 sensor um, in the formal Davis uh, uh, radiation shield. We'll call this our control. And you can see here that with respect to temperature, uh, we're getting a nice diurnal signature, exactly what you would expect. Around September 4th, we did have a, a, a short little rainfall event during the monsoon, and you can see that the temperature dropped. Uh, overall, nothing surprising here. This, uh, this setup's been collecting data for about two years, working wonderfully, no issues here. And uh, here's the humidity data that's collected by that uh, same sensor. And you can see that we get a little spike in humidity on September 4th associated with that uh, rainfall event. Uh, overall, uh, you know, nothing surprising, nice diurnal signature. Everything looks good. Next, let's take a look at the data collected by the HDC sensor in our little experimental radiation shield. And no surprises here. Here you can see that we get that same nice diurnal signature and temperature with the same taking place uh, with respect to the humidity profile. And this graph shows the temperature data both for the Davis and the uh, homebrew radiation shield. The blue series is the Davis, the red series is the homebrew, and you can see that they look pretty close to one another. There are some differences, but they're hard to see at this scale. In response, I decided to plot the difference between those two sensors as a delta. And here you can see that uh, we can get differences of up to uh, 5 degrees Fahrenheit as a worst case scenario. And you can see that this is, uh, this is interesting, the way it kind of manifests over time, where it peaks and then falls, peaks and then falls. In response, I decided to bin the data to kind of understand what the distribution percentage-wise 
was between um, homebrew radiation shield and the formal Davis radiation shield. And you can see here that 95% of that error fell between negative one and three degrees, which is actually fairly good, considering that this is a homebrew shield made out of Walmart plates. However, I did get about 5% of the results that um, uh, showed a difference between three and six degrees Fahrenheit. So I decided to take a closer look at what was going on between that three and uh, six degree range. And here's that distribution uh, for that error. And you can see that it, uh, the largest deltas are occurring typically between 7.30 and 11 a.m., uh, depending on the day. So what's going on during that time of day that's realizing that bias? Hi, folks. So it's about uh, 9.20 a.m. on September 10th. And you can see here that uh, one of my radiation shields is in the shade. And the other one is in direct sunlight. I visited this a little bit earlier today, and uh, this one was even more in the shade. I'm trying to get a time lapse here to uh, actually see how the shade casts across this, but that probably explains why well, I'm getting a temperature difference in the morning between these two radiation shields. Alright folks, I'm at Mission Gardens and I've gone ahead and installed the box on this nice little panel that staff set up for me. Solar panels up there. I've got everything wired up. This was tested last night. It was working uh, actually over the course of a couple days. It was working wonderfully. You can see my network cable here that's coming off the little I squared C booster on that board. So I've got this hanging uh, off this bar right here. It's not in my favorite location where I'd really like it is right in the middle at about eye level right here. But given the uh, ethernet cable limitation that I have right now, I have to be within six feet. This will have to do. So um, this is working. Um, it's talking to the data logger. I've already zipped this up, but I'm getting temperature and humidity registered. Let's let this run for a few days and come back and download the data and see what it looks like. All right, Thursday, October 2nd, and it's about 9 a.m. Let's see if we've got any data on the data logger. And this is looking promising. I don't know if you can uh, see the display, but I do see some data being displayed, which suggests that everything's working okay. First, I'm gonna shut it down. Okay, it's turned off. Now I'm gonna pull out the SD card. A little hard to get to. And I'm gonna insert another one. Okay, the uh, SD card's been replaced. Let's turn this on. And I see data recording, so that looks promising. Okay, so the SD card's inserted into my laptop. You can see there that I've got a data file with a little bit of size to it, which looks promising. And there's our data. There's some old data from prior testing on the, uh, these are some resets, but you can see that as of September 25th, all the way through October 2nd, 9.04 a.m. So it's working, <laughs> yay. So I'm gonna uh, close this up, uh, go ahead and uh, do a little graphing with this, see what it looks like, and uh, we'll take it from there. Make sure I don't have any uh, outliers in the data. In closing, here are the temperature data that were collected between September 25th and October 2nd on site at Mission Gardens. And here's the humidity data, which also looks fairly normal. This table in the upper right summarizes some statistics for the same. No outliers, so a good sign for bigger things to come, 
with the major lesson learned being that yes, you can build an inexpensive radiation shield that works fairly well relative to commercial alternatives, keeping in mind that placement relative to any shading during the course of the day might impact your results. I'll soon be adding additional sensors to the box, designing and 3D printing additional shields using ABS to help with longevity, explaining the setup of the data logger, and sharing code for you to use in your own project should it help. Please consider subscribing for updates, and we'll catch you next time. It's Chinese so, long bean? Chinese long bean. It's an heirloom variety from Frances Wong um, in um, BKW Farms. She, she shared these seeds with us, and we needed to grow out this lot of seeds. So I was like, let's do that in the tomorrow's garden, because long beans, cow peas, are great for tomorrow's garden crop. Yeah, any legume is good for the soil right. to, get the, uh, to get the soil going. This is really the first real crop we've planted in this garden. It's heat resistant, drought tolerant, pest resistant, and good for the soil, right? right. Um, for fixing nitrogen. 